Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. Welcome back to the Hogshead Podcast. Today, here on episode 9, we're with Castor. Hi. And we're going to be talking about, well, I think I'm going to title this video The Art of Speedrunning, just to be, uh, just to be that kind of guy. Uh, but right off the bat, Castor, um, why did you get into speedrunning, or what do you find fun about it? Oof, uh, that's a tough question. Question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just always love Talks of War. And, uh, um, I've started speedrunning. I started watching some speedruns before. Yeah. Not not from Talks of War, but um, other other games. Yeah. And then I thought mm, maybe I should try that too. And then one game came into my mind, and that was Talks of War. So. <laughs> well, did you do any speedrunning on other games before? Not before. No, I just tried uh, maybe casual to play them through as fast as I can, but but never with um, a timer, something like that. Okay, that's fair enough. I was going to say, because, I mean, it was your speedruns that influenced me to start speedrunning. And I know that previously I've said, oh, I'll never get into speedrunning. I don't understand speedrunning. Like, why would you want to do that? Because from my standpoint at the time, I felt like, if I were to speedrun, then it would kind of ruin the game for me, because, you know, I, I play it super casually, but I, I saw certain records that I felt like I could achieve, or at least, you know, achieve a better time with. Because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the best player in the world, but I feel like my ability is decent enough to have a go, at least. Yeah, I can understand that, and... What came in my mind and speedrunning is um, some people say um, you you shouldn't uh, speedrun a game you love because you will hate it then. Yeah, exactly. But um, it's for me it's just um, if I'm speedrunning the game, uh, I'm looking different at it as when I'm playing it casual. So for me, I can still have um, fun playing the game casual, but I hate the game. As I'm, spe I'm speedrunning it. <laughs> we just hate the AI and things that they're meant to do at certain times when they don't. Yeah, it, it's just um, it's untypical to speedrun those, those tactical or those um, games with AI. Yeah. Because um, the most popular speedruns for me are, are that I, I, it seems that the most popular speedruns are those um, like um, platformers. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's minimal AI and very predictable, but in Hogs of War it's just not predictable at all. <laughs> <laughs> or at least you think it's going to be, and then they do the opposite. Yeah. Like this podcast will be going out after I've uploaded uh, my most recent speedrun, where I, I beat that world record. But on mission six, right, I had killed every pig except for the sniper on the, the far left corner of the map. And, and rather than him, you know, running around or like moving to an open area, he, he runs behind the hill and then just hides for like two or three turns. And it then makes me rely on my bombardiers to like hit the mortar shots and I was missing. And I was at that point, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just restart again because I'd kind of aced it up until that point. But I was like, no, nah, I'll, I'll kill him eventually. But it, it cost me a lot of time. And it's moments like that where you have like one or two pigs left that you know you can take out, but they end up doing something that just costs you like two or three minutes more than it should do. So that record could probably be beaten by anybody else uh, by probably, I don't know, five minutes, because there, there's a few missions in there that I did decent on, but other areas where it just didn't go, didn't go according to plan. Yeah, that's a, a thing that happens often in Hogs of War, but uh, for me that makes the game interesting, so... Yeah, replayable. I have, yeah, I have a strategy for my speedrun too. Yeah. Uh, um, for most of the levels I know exactly what to do, and the first two or three turns you can do the same nearly always, but then... Then you have to be spontaneous sometimes, <laughs> and... I like that in Hogs of War because you, you can't just um, learn a level um, step by step or can't just learn the level yeah. um, and say you're making this five turns and then it's over yeah because it it, it won't go that way 80 percent of the time and yeah there's, there's always different variations that yeah. you can do 
So you you definitely need a lot of game knowledge yes. to to speed run the game. And th there's still new things I'm learning as well. Like I watched your speed runs and I, I took a few uh, notes on it as well. Like again, mission six that uh, mine jump where you're able to jump over the minefield with the engineer or the, the engineer class. Yeah, that's um, that's a I like the trick uh, trick a lot. Um, it is it is possible on every mine though, mm. but um, this uh, in this particular area it's um, it still has a advantage that um, you're jumping from a higher spot than you're landing, yeah. so you have uh, more frames to do it. I think it's nearly frame perfect if if it's flat. Yeah, and so um, the, it's working well for me on on mission six because. I have a spot where I know I should jump, and um, so I've learned that. Well, but, you, um, you mentioned um, game knowledge. What, what would you advise to people that want to get into specifically Hogs of War speedrunning? Yeah, you should definitely have played the game through um, a lot of times and uh, also able to complete hard mode yeah. without too much trouble. Mm. So you definitely have to play in a normal mode. Um, you can you, you shouldn't you shouldn't have any problems playing the game through because um, you will get a lot of trouble in speedrunning and restarting a level is a no go apparently <laughs> because you will lose a lot a lot of time. Yeah, I found that the earlier missions, predominantly on Hogshead, you can finish. I think missions two, three, four, and. Four. No, two, three, and four. You can finish in uh, two turns, two or three turns, I think. Yeah, and uh, mission three, you can finish. Yeah, it, it it's always um, it's always uh, uh no, not about okay, but uh, it, it's always dependable which, on. Yeah, depend. AI. It depends on the um. And not 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 the, the AI. Uh, if you're playing half health or the category you're playing. Yeah. And of course, the the promotion, uh, how you spend your promotion points, which pick ranks you. you oh, that's you have. true. Yeah, because you predominantly go with uh, the engineers, right? Yeah, engineers are my favorite class in speedrunning because they're lacking of long range weapons, but um, it's just easier to play with them because they have short range and you can't miss that so easy. The super yeah. shotgun is, um, yeah, very very valuable, <laughs> very valuable. Yeah. And also with the shrapnel grenades, you have um, something, uh, yeah, very good uh, against the artilleries or pillboxes against oh, vehicles. Yeah. Glacier guns is a key on that yeah. one. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, you, you can also. I mean, the gunners would also have the advantage of the um, the flamethrower, but yeah. only on the third grade of uh, yeah, that's on the true, bombardier yeah. side. Pyrotechnics, yeah. And also, they are slower overall, so. Mm -hmm. Trying to get from A to B just takes too long. I mean, my preferred lineup is two heavy weapons, two engineers, and one espionage. Okay. But obviously, medic is not really a thing in speedrunning because at the end of the day, you're trying to finish everything as quickly as possible, so healing is just not needed. No, it's just he's lacking of offensive weapons, and that's just there. Yeah. I mean, Tranquilizer would be handy, but having to get to the rank of surgeon would take too long, and it just wouldn't really be viable. So, also the tranquilizer, just um, yeah, it is a good weapon for casual playing because the enemy is skipping a turn. But most of the time, it's faster to just deal more damage and try to kill him, bigger, but uh, let him skip a turn. Yeah, that's true. It's also the poison gas, and waiting till he dies isn't that fast most of yeah. the time. <laughs> I mean, I found that the, the troublesome missions are uh, Mission 6 Under Siege, Mission 7 Communication Breakdown, Mission 13 Glacier Guns, Th those were my, oh, and, and Mission 22 Assassination, those were my key ones that I needed to try and, uh, I, I say 100%, I kind of did it with Mission 6 and 7, but... Uh, and and I, I did decent on, on Glacier Guns, like taking out the uh, the pillboxes. Uh, instead of going for the promotion point, I used my commando on Glacier Guns to 
use a jetpack to stand on top of the first pillbox so that he jumps out and then he skips his turn and then that just saves me a bunch of time but mission 22 ruined everything for me because the gunners just refuse to jump out of their artilleries even if you use a jetpack to like uh, go on top of their artillery sometimes they'll just skip their turn rather than jumping out so it was a, a huge pain yeah, mission twenty two is uh, is really uh, it depends a lot of the, on the gunners what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, even the um, me... even even the hero inside his uh, shelter, like he would, I, I was expecting him to jump out and do something, but he just went straight for the airstrike and. <laughs> it's not okay. The, yeah, that, that's why I'm always I'm trying to get him out of there before before his turn. Yeah, but so he isn't then, using his airstrike. Then the problem is whether or not you have enough commandos or if you have enough uh, weapons that can quickly deal a load of damage to the shelter. That's true. Um, and uh, you um, always um, have to add it with um, yeah, the uh, flamethrower or classic grenades. Yeah. It, it depends on what, what you have. Um, How much damage, yeah. like max damage, does the flamethrower do? Um, I think 102. Oh, okay. Something like that. So it, it can one shot an artillery, uh, not an artillery, a pillbox or a shelter. Yeah. From your experience, how popular would you say speedrunning currently is within the Hogs of War community? Because I know that originally the Discord server was for speedrunning. And... Yeah. Um... Uh, it's it's a apparently a funny story because um it was it was two years ago I think it was two years ago yeah. um in the summer I yeah decided to maybe try a Hogs of War speedrun mm. and yeah just um went to speedrun.com and looked if there are any speedruns because I, I thought there weren't because yeah it, it's a relatively small game so <laughs> I thought. Mm. But then, uh, but then I saw that um, there are actually three speed runs in the glitchless category, yeah. and they were all done um, in the in the week before. <laughs> wow. And so, yeah, I was motivated um, uh, for that because there are other people speed running it currently, and I got into it as well. And yeah, mm. then uh, trying to Discord, well, which um, yeah, we were about 10 people and four or five of them were speedrunning the game yeah but then uh yeah the other ones uh, two of the guys um st stopped speedrunning and flapper as well and i was the only one for for um, about a month and then, and then i said no hmm. <laughs> i hadn't i hadn't had the motivation because there weren't really other speedrunners around yeah as the ukraine guy joined again i was motivated and made some speedruns again because i had a little competition mm. um, maybe i will with you we'll start again and see if i can compete with your times yeah start kickstart the uh the need for more speedruns i find that that's kind of the the, the overall like way the speedrunning goes is that someone will do a speedrun and then everyone will see it and then that will motivate everyone else to start speedrunning again but i've i've noticed that with a lot of the speedrun records there isn't well we, we've kind of had to uh, i guess list all of the rules recently because on a lot of the speedruns that have evidence of video there isn't a, a timer next to uh, their speedrun so they don't necessarily count but i'm just curious um, from what you've seen from other games and other speedruns is it always the case that uh in in a video uh, of the speedrun there'll be a timer next to it as evidence or is it you know if, is it the same across all all games i mean not necessarily but um from my point of view i think a timer it, is recommendable and uh, it is used on most of the speedruns I saw. Yeah, it's just the time I use it. It hasn't to be. Um, it, it don't have to be um, uh, re recorded with the timer. Sometimes it's just um, uh, you edit it there. Yeah. Then, but uh, I think a timer it isn't too much work and 
I think it's just um, um, apparently in a game with Fox of War with the with the different levels and and stuff. I think um, the splits and to to compare your times and yeah. it just it just helps you and helps the viewers to recognize oh it was was it a good level how it's compared to the other ones you can just compare better and yeah yeah for me uh, timer. Also, you can with the timer, you can see if it stops or not, and you can maybe if someone uh, splits his um, or splices his one together, you can can tell it so good. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I I, I found that in a lot of the runs that I did, I ended up forgetting to hit <laughs> hit the the key that I had to finish that split and move on to the next one. So. There were some, some runs that I did that I had to stop because I didn't actually set an undo key. So then by that point, it was too late. And yeah, yeah of... but you don't, you don't have to redo then. You can just, oh, you just don't have to restart. You can um, manually, um, after you have finished the run, you can manually change the splits. So uh, if I noticed uh, I forgot the split, I just split it at the moment. Um, uh, remembered which um, split I made the mistake and uh, manually changed it afterwards. So oh, okay, I, I didn't really think of that. I just wanted to do everything as cleanly as possible. But I think with the yep. likes of Open Hogs of War and Reheated coming along, I think it will create more of an emphasis for people to do more speedruns. The issue with Reheated, obviously, is that you know the, the main platform is going to be PlayStation Four. So, considering that most of us use emulators on PCs, it could be a bit of a problem. Yeah, um, that, that can be, but um, uh, with free that you you have to make a whole new whole new category. You can't compare um, um PSX speed run then with the reheated speed run because the game well is the same, should be the same, but uh, it is running on. Uh, different speed that's true frame frame and will um, frames will be higher the loading times will probably be faster yeah so you you, you can't really compare this those two then and uh, with open hogs of war and we did uh hoxie man from open meant he can, could include a, a timer mm. that would, which would be nice and maybe we can talk to epio as well if he can just include a timer i think it wouldn't be too much work to include an in-game timer. That's true, yeah, that, that right. would be a nice option. I think it will open doors in the future, not in the near future though, because of just how much time has been spent on Reheated currently, and obviously all the things going on in the world right now with the delays, and, you know, I mean, the team is still working on stuff, and I think I've said that about a million times, but, because, <laughs> you know, in, in, in one of my videos that has, I think, nearly 10,000 views now, I did say in it initially that the release date was meant to be Easter Easter 2020, but things have changed, and yeah, I don't know. I, I think when it does come out, it'll be, it, it'll be positive in a lot of ways, um, but I just, one thing that I want to do going forward is to not leave speedrunning out, like this week for me, because uh, I'm pretty sure today is Thursday, I don't really know at this point because I'm, <laughs> I'm losing track. Um, I've just kind of dedicated this week to doing speedrunning and kind of getting to grips with uh, all the mechanics and, and kind of getting into that mindset of... Uh, it's it's almost like a, a robotic mindset because you're like, right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and it's got to be done, you know, as perfectly as I possibly can. And if I put a, st if I put a step wrong, then... I don't know, it depends if you're a perfectionist, but for me, if I put a step wrong and I feel like it's going to impact my time too much, then I'll just restart, and that's why it took me so long to uh, produce some kind of a, re of a result with the most recent speedrun. Yeah, and for, for me, always was with the restarting, uh, as I watched my runs, uh, if I watch, if I watch, as I watched my statistics, I think 80% of my, my, my runs of my restarted ones, I uh, restarted at the first four levels. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're much more likely, if I was going further than mission 20 or mission 15, I think I, I never restarted a run. 
Oh. I either just um, maybe two or three, I just um, cut and, or yeah, maybe two or three, I restarted them, but the other ones are just um, got to the end. Yeah. For me, but, I, I think after mission, after mission seven, it gets pretty easy uh, up until Glacier Guns. So from mission eight to 12 is, is fine. And then I, I think Trotsville is probably the one of the uh, islands that takes the longest to do. Either, either that or Bellyopolis. Yeah, it can, can be that Trotsville, you have uh, some pretty easy levels as well. But they also t take the longest because you've got Saving Private Rind, Glacier Yeah, Guns. I did. Actually, I guess it's only really the, the start of Trotsville because then you've got um, Fortified Swine and... Is it Battle Stations? Yeah, yeah. those two are really... One of the easier and uh, battle stations depends. It, it can be if if the enemy is landing in a minefield and yeah. just not hitting a mine and not dying, then it it can take a while. Yeah, and if you put and if with... sorry, go on. Uh, and if you are unlucky and your pigs is your one of your pigs is dying in the minefield, then that can be unlucky. But yeah, so... yeah, fortified mine is just uh, <laughs> straightforward. Pretty pretty much no problem. Yeah, yeah. and obviously. With the most latest speedrun that I did, I wasn't going for promotion points because, you know, half health, just finish it as quickly as possible. But I try and pick them up where I can, where they're probably the easiest. And I mean, Battle Stations is probably one of the easiest ones to get. That's who uh, um, I have uh, certain levels where I know I, I pick up the... The promotion points were uh, easy to get and help me help or uh, available for me. Yeah. But other levels like in uh, Spy, I Spy, I don't use the Super TNT to, to yeah. burst my way into it because it's, it's a wasted turn and a wasted strong weapon. Yeah, exactly. Any or, any mission that requires you to blow something up, I'm just like nah, I'm just gonna leave it. Ah, <laughs> uh, best best example for uh yeah the. Wait for not waiting for medals is uh, a kill seal because uh, <laughs> yeah it's just uh, I have done 100 p uh, promotion point speed runs as well before yeah. and on the beginning till mission 10 you haven't really a difference because you're playing the same really and village people you can get them uh, medal easily yeah okay 10 bang as a mesh takes a little longer but yeah. you also have the super TNT up there yeah. But at the end, it just takes takes a lot <laughs> more time, especially for a kill a seal. You have to wait so long. Yeah. Mm. See, but I, I really don't like the missions like High and Dry and Hero Warship, where you have to rely on positioning to pick up medals. So like High and Dry, obviously the medals drop down on their side of the island, so you have to move over there and take time to pick those up when they drop down when you kill any of the, the commandos and then the same on hero warship they drop down sort of in the center of the map i think yeah yeah and that that just takes too long for me so I, if if i'm in that area then i'll try and pick them up just for the sake of being able to upgrade pigs as quickly as possible but if you're doing a half health run i find that as long as you have two heroes by the i don't know by Bellyopolis or austria then you should be fine because I, I think you need to be at you need to have at least one hero by mission 16's over the top because you can complete that in two turns if you use the airstrike to uh, kill the grunt and the commando and then mm -hmm. you can just shoot the gunner with a sniper rifle then okay yeah that, that's working in... yeah wait um, I'm thinking if it's working on normal health as well uh, yeah um, I, I because think maybe wouldn't the commander have too much health yeah i think yeah i am um, i could try it i could try it once yeah. but yeah um over the top is really a critical mission because um you can finish it in three turns i think in uh, three or four turns mm. but if you if you're taking too long they're just more animals more in it Enemies, not animals. Enemies will, <laughs> will, will come and um, it will take too long then. So over the top is really a crucial mission Yeah, for me. I think any 
any any missions that have reinforcements, you need to obviously avoid them. If if you're doing a speed run and reinforcements end up dropping in, then that's kind of when you know you've taken too long. Yeah, you you can't really have uh, reinforcements in any level. Yeah. Because yeah, no, I I spy, uh, not I spy, spying game. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, you understand if you have the reinforcements. Yeah. Village people, yeah, you shouldn't take that long. Oh, no. <laughs> Not even the normal game. Yeah. Assassination two that would take too long. The only f- only level where the reinforcements could drop is um a chemical compound compound. Oh, that's true. The, yeah. The bombardier. He he could he could drop in. So you have to be. That's that's also a hard mission for me. Mm. You have to be a little lucky with what the enemy is doing. Yeah. Well, I've taken to. On chemical compound, I've taken to uh, using my hero, using that wall climb on that left side, picking up the health crate on their side, and then using my airstrike to kill the commando. And then my next turn, I'll use my commando wall climb all the way to the pillbox, jetpack on top of that so he jumps out, and then kind of just clean up and take out the other enemies. Oh. Yeah, with Alpha, if you have um, the advantage that the airstrike will just one one kill nearly every enemy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's difficult on Chemical Compound to kill the uh, the spy and the surgeon with the the airstrike because the the surgeon's slightly at an angle, so you ca- it's not like mm-hmm. a straight uh, straight airstrike. You kind of have to, and you can take the bridge out, but it doesn't kill. Like you'll probably kill the surgeon, but you won't kill the spy. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's that's a little tricky. Mm. But you mentioned wall climbs, and for me, they are so valuable for speed runs. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I mean, there was a discussion if they should be counted as a glitch, mm. or if they should be allowed in uh, glitch layers. And we agreed on allowing them in glitch layers because it, it it isn't really a glitch for me and for the others too. So yeah, I feel like it was intended in some way. Or at least, you know, the that's the wall climbs are done through pressing yourself up against the outer edges of the map to climb up. For people that don't know, to climb up uh, unclimbable surfaces. But I, I don't know. I feel like through testing, they would have found that they would have noticed it. And if it was a glitch or a bug, they would have removed that, so you wouldn't have been able to do it. But considering it's still there. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it's not a it's not a glitch for me. Yeah, but, but for, for me, it's in the game and it's in the level for me. Like a glitch that shouldn't be counted as glitch is yeah, yeah. like the half health glitch. That's that's a that's a typical glitch for me. Yeah. Half health for the commander glitch, but the, the wall climbs are just different. Yeah, I mean you 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 could also do speed runs without wall climbs, but. Some levels would really take a lot longer. Yeah, exactly, like uh, Chemical Compound. Or Bang even smash. Assassination, yeah, just... Mm. Oh, where, where is the the wall climb on Bangers and Mash? Is it in the... Is it behind the, the scout? Yeah, you can you can climb up to the scout and further on okay. till you have an eye on the platform with the, with the um, artilleries. Okay, because there's still wall climbs and things that I'm, I'm discovering that I've never used before. I mean, uh, I've, I've searched for wall climbs on every level, and I mean, there are nearly in every level is some kind of wall climb. Yeah. But uh, most of them are just not so useful. <laughs> yeah. When I watched your uh, your world record run, obviously I, I saw a lot of times. Well, I saw uh, that you restarted because you you put a step wrong, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm finding that speed running overall for me is is becoming more enjoyable because, yeah, I, I just I, I I like the game enough to speed run it, uh, and I think I could probably advise other people that are wanting to get into speed running, uh, to not immediately go for world record times if you feel like your ability when playing the game isn't good enough. Maybe try and maybe jump into a multiplayer with your friends or jump into a multiplayer by yourself and set all of the teams to 
you as the player and you can just practice your long range shots as heavy weapons you can practice uh that, that's the other problem as well with multiplayer is that you know you have the discrepancies between the single player ranks uh like the engineer who has the mines mm -hmm. but then the engineer in multiplayer doesn't have mines so in some cases it's difficult to practice in multiplayer so i guess long story short practice however you want uh but single player is obviously where everything happens in terms of speed running um <laughs> but would you ever look at multiplayer for speed running so like i don't know playing through every single multiplayer map i know there's like isn't there like 40 of them mm. yeah you, you could do it um for i think the long range weapons to practice it would be yeah would be valuable for the bazooka or the mortar yeah that could help but otherwise i would just recommend um, playing through the single player campaign because you know how the enemy will maybe or hopefully behave or what they will do and learn the levels learn um okay where the where's the minefield maybe learn the minefield so you can go down through them with other classes as well yeah and yeah that, that could recommend and watching other speed runs so uh, I immediately, as I started speedrunning, mm -hmm. in front of it, I watched um, the current world record and was watching which route he was using and just, um, yeah, adopting yeah. Um, to his style. So you don't have to pull new strats out of your head. So, <laughs> so you can, you can, yeah, just uh, copy uh, the the current ones and maybe yeah, change them if you think well, other fingers are better or yeah. if you, yeah just um try to yeah um do lo best. look what they do uh, <laughs> what they did do do what they did but do it better i mean that's that's what i, mm. I did uh with mine I, I looked at yours and i wasn't looking for ways to make it better i was just looking at certain areas that i was having trouble understanding how to uh, complete the level fastest or complete it faster because you know if, you, if you're looking if you're if you're a I don't know an average player and you're looking at I keep going back to mission six but if you look at mission six you know you, you're surrounded by a minefield and to most players you see a minefield you can't get through it unless you destroy a mine or you detonate a mine so you know a lot of players will have the mindset of uh, I, I can't get out of this area because of X Y and Z whether it be a minefield or a hill so learning those wall climbs, learning those specific areas that you are having trouble with, uh, because again, you know, I had trouble with mission six, seven, 22, 13, even, even glacier guns, you know, I was having issues figuring out what was the fastest way of destroying the pillboxes. Cause you know, I, I think we can agree that mission 13 takes the longest in, in speed runs, unless you have, <laughs> unless you have another example. No, oh, if you um, if yeah, it depends on the category. So I think on 100% uh, or 100 promotion points, like Hill Seal is the longest. But overall, if you're doing it any percent run, Glacier again guns, yeah, just takes the longest because all five enemies are in the pillbox, and pillboxes have a lot of health. Yeah. <laughs> it's what five five pillboxes, so yeah, five pillboxes, 500, 500 health plus whatever health the, the pigs have if you're doing half or or normal or even hard mode because hard i i i want to attempt hard mode but at the same time i really don't want to go there <laughs> because that will just drive me insane because I, I feel like with hard mode you have to accept that at some point well the, the majority of the time you're going to lose a pig especially towards the the later stages of the campaign yeah i haven't touched hard mode so far because i think i wouldn't have fun at all playing it because hard mode is really a lot about if I'm, if I'm playing hard mode casually I'm playing it slow I'm playing it yeah. strategically tactical looking um, to save all my picks and that just takes time and yeah. I don't want to speed run it because uh, I have to go as fast as I can and mm. I think it would first frustrate me how 
I got the enemies aiming all the time and yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Maybe I'll, I will try it once. I mean, you can take the the base strategies that you have in speedrunning normal mode and apply those into hard mode. But like you said, yeah, the fact that you have to really think about it tactically to even survive and get that survival bonus is, is a tricky thing in hard mode. And I, I feel like no matter how much you have played the game, a lot of players will always struggle with hard mode. So if anyone is going to be attempting that, good luck because you really need to study uh, normal mode and study uh, the maps themselves or any of the glitches you can use as well as the AI and uh, kind of how they their overall behavior within each individual mission which in the long run sounds like a, a big task but I mean if you look at normal mode you can complete that in I don't know what two two and a bit hours on average Oh, normal mode. If you if you mean glitchless, um, or with, and if you're just playing it like casually, casually, uh, yeah. Um, so the the records I said was um um, if I'm going for all promotion points, I needed two and a half hours, and if I'm going just as fast as I can, it was barely under two hours. Wow. But um, yeah, that's. You have to get lucky sometimes, and yeah, yeah, it's you have to be fast. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, but but then then you have the other categories like uh, generated. I mean that I know is is a glitch in itself in its own category. Okay. Um, but that that in itself you can get quite lucky at. Like I I did a run where on one of the generated maps it gave me it put four of the grunts like right next to each other so I could just use an airstrike and kill them and finish the match in like a minute and a half. Yeah, that, that category is um, mostly about, uh, not mostly, but uh, it, it's, it's it's the most, it's the one you have to have the most luck. Yeah, <laughs> it just depends on if the game is going to be kind to you because there'll be times if you attempt the generated uh, speed run that the map it gives you might look okay but then the pigs are all like spaced out i find with a generated run you'll need to have at least two pigs placed next to each other and i mean i don't oh. know if, i don't know if you watched that speed run that i did but i predominantly used the, the poison gas because i did the, the half health uh, glitch as well so using that you know they have 25 health minus 15 they instantly die when they take their turn so you can kind of strategize around that about which pig is going to take their turn next but other than that, it's it's just very very repetitive. Yeah, but um, the advantage of this one is it's it's fast, and faster compared to the other ones. That's that's a problem. What Toxic Four has, the the speed runs take relatively long. Yeah. So about one one two two and a half hours. That's that's long for a speed run, and lo it's a long time to to start. It's true. So we don't have really a category. It's what's it's medium, but twenty thirty minutes. We just have boot camp, which is fast, and then any percent all glitches, which takes an hour. <laughs> so for me, there's no no mid one to to start. I mean, you can just start practicing Hawkset or the first two two islands then. But um, yeah. we're liking up a mid category. Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea actually. If you focus, if you're looking at getting into speedrunning, you can focus on each individual island. So you could play the game casually, and then when you come to the island that you are maybe struggling with, and you want to attempt to speedrun in itself, like you're not doing a full speedrun. Maybe you'll do the first island, play it casually, and then you want to study the uh, so Australia, that kind of thing, study that island and go on from there. I don't know, there is a lot to learn and it can be quite overwhelming for new people. Like for me, it was it was a lot to get my head around initially because yes, I play this game casually. Yes, I enjoy it. But do I want to take that step into speedrunning? Uh, and for some people it may, uh, I don't want to say it may ruin the game, but in some respects it might because, you know, Again, it becomes very robotic and you need to know all of these things. But 
yeah, I think if we can just learn off of each other and maybe create uh, a speedrunning spark again and have other people attempting to beat records and do all that sort of stuff. Because, I mean, I, I want to go after your world record of the... Was it 100%? Or was it just a uh, normal playthrough? I, I, I have both. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So e for... either Either one of those... Like, I, I want to go for that, but at the same time, I, I'm not... Uh, may, maybe the one that's that's not 100% uh, all bonuses. Maybe the other one. I, I could go for that one. But I can still see a lot of areas where I need to improve. And I, I still see a lot of areas where I know that I don't know the best strategy for it. Yes, yeah, so to, to be honest, um, the normal, uh, the one, the any percent glitchless one... Yeah. It's the one I'm most proud of. <laughs> so, <laughs> was there any moment in that run where you were just like, "Yep, this is it"? Not really. It was just the first and currently only one that was under two hours in this category, <laughs> and it was the main category. Uh, I started speed running and I had the competition with the three other guys. Yeah. So that's why it's had such a special place. But um, there is a lot of time to be saved still so my sum of best segments because it's split at every level is about one hour 45 minutes so about 12 minutes faster yeah. but yeah i had a lot of luck in some segments and some levels so uh, to have all the luck and have a fast one it's um yeah can be hard but uh, it just can be definitely done to have a faster time <laughs> Yeah, with the, with the going back to the the generated one, I could have completed that in about fifty fifty two minutes maybe, or or even uh, actually the previous record was fifty six fifty three, and I almost completed it in about fifty one minutes, but I messed up. I was on the the verge of of getting a much better record than what I've currently got because it's like what one hour three minutes, and I know yeah. that I can go back and try and beat that, but. At the moment, I think I'm a bit exhausted from <laughs> doing speedruns. Um. Yeah, but with the other one, just as I said in the Discord, um, you can see that his loading times are just way faster. And also, I, I tested it out um, with um, just the... Uh, I played the one, uh, I also tried it uh, till the first level. So I didn't pl have played the first level, just... Um, Saw how, how long I, I take to the first level and how he is taking. Yeah. And I lost a minute. Wow. <laughs> to the start of the first level, so you can see how much faster his loading times are. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, the main rule that we go off when we do speed running is that the emulator shouldn't have an overclocking above times one. But previous records have been a bit fishy, and there have been questions raised as to whether those speed runs were done with. Was it overclocking of like what times four? I, I tried it with times four then, and I had um, barely the same time. So <laughs> exactly. So obviously, having higher settings in your emulator means that the run is void because you know you get faster loading times, and that doesn't put everyone on the same equal playing field. So again, if you're going to be attempting speed runs, then your emulator must not be overclocked above times one. Um, but yeah. If you do, good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's generally the problem with um, emulated speedruns because um, yeah, if if you have the same settings, it's, it still depends on your computer. Yeah, to, to a certain degree, I guess. Yeah. Again, the the boot camp speedruns, I wanted to have a go at. I saw yours. I, I saw the, the strategy you used for it, and obviously that is a... It, it feels like something that is achievable, but... I feel like you've aced it to the point where it's it's not reachable for some players. Uh, the, 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 uh, I think you can save two seconds and mess with, uh, with the basic shot at the end a little. But well, but, I, I mean, you seem to get it like like a direct direct hit with it. Yeah, that's the problem. It's faster if you don't get a direct hit if you are landing in front of them because oh, it's that's faster. True, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, smash damage. And the, the record is 2 minutes 28? Yeah, 28 seconds. Okay. 
say if you but, want. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's fun to it's fun to play, but because it's really fast and yeah, you have to reset it quite often. But um, <laughs> I still like to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you beat the previous record by what milliseconds? Or did you beat uh, it by like? Because the previous five record... seconds. Really? Uh, I watched today. Maybe um, something changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, damn. So yeah. yeah, if anyone wants to try and beat the current speed run for boot camp, which is two minutes twenty eight, <laughs> again, good luck. Because uh, I might have a go, but I doubt I'll produce anything worthwhile. Yeah, another um, category we haven't talked about yet is the test category. For if you don't know what TAS mean, it's a tool assisted speedrun. Oh, TAS, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry if I pronounced that a little strange. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, you, you um, program a, a program. I don't know. You program something, <laughs> then uh, uh, emulator is just playing yeah, you, uh, you, or pressing you... the buttons as you program them. Oh, I thought it was completely. I thought it was fully programmed so that it's it's the AI doing it for you. I didn't realize that you did the AI yeah, as well. Yeah, it's it's the AI, but you have to program it. So uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So the current basically it, it's about, it's from Tommy. Yeah. Uh, Fifty-one minutes forty-four seconds, but he's using the half health um, oh, cheat as well. Okay. But I will definitely recommend watching it because there are some insane shots, <laughs> and it's pretty. So you can't you can't really pull off. Yeah. Uh, normally, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely worth watching. I had a lot of fun watching it, and. <laughs> <laughs> Is there currently a, a Taz run for normal mode? It isn't. I uh, heard Tommy was um, working on one, but I don't know how far he got. But um, yeah, it's just harder because some of his tricks. Yeah, it's working just better with half health. Yeah, it's just faster and more. And it, it, yeah, and it's a lot of uh, of work doing that. <laughs> I feel like with Taz, it's like the the shoe is on the other foot, and it, it's the player that's out like outdoing the AI, and the AI is just like what? That's not fair. Yeah, it's a lot about grinding and finding the fastest strategy yeah. possible because some strategies are just you, you can't use them on on your normal one because you can't pull the shots off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least not regularly. I mean, you can hit one out of a thousand, but um, yeah. for me, it's not worth to reset resetting 999 times. <laughs> that's very true. And that's where a lot of the, the replayability of Hogs and War comes in is that it's not always the same. I know we've said that already, but it stands true with just regular play. It doesn't have to be speedrunning. That's what makes this game so replayable and continues to uh, be so popular. I mean, the Discord is now at, what, three, over 300 members? 318, I think we were today. <laughs> so we could potentially hit 500 by the end of this year. Um, that would be awesome. <laughs> and there'll be too many people. And be like, no, it's too much. Uh but we'll see. Yeah, and imagine if um, we did this release. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then it's just going to get a bit crazy. Because, I mean, that's going to be on the PlayStation Store. And, again, you know, we're just going to keep finding more people that are either fans of the game. But what I'm more excited about is, is new players and how they react to, yes, reheated, but also the original as well and getting them into the original. Yeah, uh, I don't know if yet, but uh, I'm still excited that this game has such a big fan base. Yeah, and also such a young fan base. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think most of the people in the Discord are in the twenties, something like that. Yeah, and that's fascinating for me. Yeah, me too. I mean, there's a lot of veteran veteran players, um, but we're slowly getting a, a higher influx of younger and newer players which is it's fun to see because it makes us well it makes us feel old but it makes me feel happy because uh it means that this game isn't being left and forgotten about which seems to be the the main thing that a lot of people say a lot like oh this game has just been 
left in the dust and people have forgotten about it. It's nice to see people playing it again. But, I mean, we've always been here. We've just kind of never really gotten together and tried to make something of this this game in this community. Yeah, I just have the feeling that everybody who played this game as a, cat, as a child is a huge fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I remember when I was... When I, when I first started playing this game, I was five or six. But as I got older, I remember I would... Uh, I had I had a bunk bed and I was on the the bottom bunk and I had this like I don't know this like 15 inch TV that was like hella chunky and it, it took a while to turn on like you press the button and the screen would just kind of fizzle <laughs> into existence <Yeah. laughs> um, but I'd like create a little like den in my bed like I put a sheet on the on the top bunk so that no one could see me in my bed and I'd just be sitting there playing Hogs of War for hours and <laughs> I mean I was terrible like I remember it took me forever to get to the last mission and then when I did get to the last mission I was just like but this is bullshit I can't beat them and I think I did what everyone else does where you do the you do the poison trick and then you poison just hide hiding. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when I did that I was like yes I've officially beaten it I don't care what people say it counts do that for speed yeah. and poison gas I mean. <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of great memories too yeah. so I always watch my, my father playing as a little child yeah. it was and I was, was laying next to him and watching him and it was just fascinating how good he was because I was terrible <laughs> <laughs> uh, see my dad was the opposite he, he was the one who originally bought it because obviously it was his PlayStation and then he passed it off to me when when he got a PS2 um, but I remember watching him playing it and he was terrible and he didn't understand it. He didn't understand the aiming and how it worked. And I just remember him missing so many shots and <laughs> all sorts. It was wonderful. <laughs> uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast. This has been episode nine with my good friend Castor. Do you have anything left to say? Any any further advice for future speedrunners or just fans of the game? Oh, join the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yeah, do oh, join right, thanks for having me here. <laughs> uh, Appreciate it. No, no, it's, it's it's good to have you on. You are my my first guest, so congratulations. Uh, feel honored. <laughs> After eight episodes, I finally have someone on mm. with me to do this podcast. Uh, but yes, do join the Discord. Links, of course, to everything will be in the description. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today. So we will catch you guys later for the next one. Okay, should I say something then? <laughs> <laughs>